programme this afternoon. Do you think that Boris Johnson wants a deal with the European Union? I think that he's in thrall to a certain group in society who don't really care much about what happens as long as they get out of the European Union. And so, faced with the pincer movement of the Brexit movement, Boris Johnson has to say what he can to try and preserve that very fragile, extreme coalition of anti-Europeans. Um, it's got worse in the last uh, few weeks with the new government, with the new civil service appointments, with a contempt for parliament, uh, a contempt for the constitution and parliamentary democracy. And anybody who gets in the way of that is going to be vilified. We all know that. We're used to it. And they've now turned their attentions on Philip Hammond. He has one huge advantage. He knows where the bodies are buried. And he's a man of great integrity. He's steered the economy towards a healthier position with great courage. And he knows exactly the disaster that No Deal Brexit is all about. He also said earlier on, in fact, uh, both on radio this morning and in The Times today, Mr Hammond, uh, removal of the backstop is a wrecking ball for any negotiation. Do you agree? Well, that's what the Europeans say. It's what the Irish say. It's what anybody who knows the value of the peace process in Ireland uh, has achieved, believes. And uh, Philip Hammond is articulating the anxiety very widely expressed by many, many people. And curious enough, on, in the United States, uh, there's a beginning of unease about the risk to Irish interests from the idea that you can simply crash out. Do you agree with the former Chancellor? Oh, I completely agree with the former Chancellor. But then, so, I mean, let's be frank, it's, it's always dangerous to make these personal issues. Uh, Philip Hammond has had access to the best of one of the world's Treasury teams. He's seen all the forecasts from virtually every reputable international and national economic forecasting team. And they all point in the same direction, to a very hard consequence for no deal. British people want to leave. They voted to leave. That's what they voted for three years ago. You'll know how the uh, story goes, that um, the May government was dragging its feet and Mr Hammond um, in charge of finances during that time. And in fact, the Prime Minister went further today with a makeshift um, Prime Minister question time, if you will, uh, on, on social media, uh, suggesting that people like you, uh, Mr Hammond and others, although he didn't name you, uh, were collaborating with the European Union. Well, I haven't had a conversation with anybody in Europe for as long as I can remember on political grounds. Uh, of course, the Chancellor will have done because that's his job to keep in touch and um, create the right sort of relationships. And so uh, to try and suggest that people like me who have argued under the enthusiastic leadership of every Conservative Prime Minister since Winston Churchill for a better and closer relationship with Europe, are in some way in collusion with anybody, is just a preposterous rewrite of the way things are. But it's indicative. You see, what happens in Number 10 is that they work out a line that they think is the most appealing to public opinion, and then they peddle it. And it's done at official level, it's done at political level, it's sent out on a piece of paper to guide people as to how to deal with this. And anyone who gets in the crossfire becomes a target. Well, OK, that's politics, but it is not what I call the best interests of this country. And it's got much, much worse since Boris Johnson's reshuffle and his appointment of certain zealots in order to focus British public opinion on their very narrow agenda. Thinking of anybody in particular? Well, Dominic Cummins is self-evidently a, a self-appointed uh, uh, leader of the uh, present administration. He briefs everybody, he talks to everybody, he abuses politicians who get in his way, uh, and, and he's completely unaccountable. 
You see, the, the point of Parliament is to hold ministers to account. Now, just tell me how Dominic Cummings is held to account by Parliament. And you can say, well, Parliament, what's that? Well, I'll tell you what Parliament is. It's your ultimate safeguard. It's your ultimate guarantee of freedom. It's where the great battles that have made us the parliamentary democracy, what we are, have been fought and won. He's been employed by the Prime Minister to fulfil the Prime Minister's wishes. Yes, that is indeed right. Absolutely right. And what is the Prime Minister? The Prime Minister is somebody who can command a majority in the House of Commons. That is the only thing that singles him out from 649 other members of the House of Commons, that he can command a majority. And the sober, hard, cold truth, as you know and I, is that he hasn't got a majority for no deal in the House of Commons. How do you see the situation developing, uh, my Lord, over the coming weeks and months? Do you think we will leave on the 31st of October? I don't think anyone has the first idea. Uh, I can think of 25 scenarios, and I've read them all in the national press, plus the ones I could make up for myself, and nobody knows. And what an extraordinary situation that is, that the future of this country's economy, of our living standards, our place in the world, is a vacuum. The Prime Minister says something, but he has no authority to command the House of Commons. And Philip Hammond uh, appears to be as mad as hell and not about to take it anymore, although you know, he's a quietly spoken man like um, Sir Geoffrey Howe was. We saw what happened with Sir Geoffrey Howe as far as the, prime, uh, the then Prime Minister was concerned. It basically triggered his uh, speech in the House of Commons, triggered the end of her government. Do you, to what extent do you think uh, Philip Hammond speaking out now is likely to trigger major challenges for the current Prime Minister? I think that it is uh, a straw in the wind. Uh, it's not new because the revolt was there. The reshuffle recently following Boris Johnson's premiership was a harsh, polarising, narrowing reshuffle designed to eliminate any debate in Cabinet to coalesce around a very narrow option which uh, was bound to lead to more conflict in the Commons. And it, what it did in the House of Commons was to, first of all, put a lot of experienced ministers who, again, knew exactly what the scale of the problems facing Brexit are on the back benches to free them of any sense of cabinet responsibility and therefore to increase the numbers of people who in the last resort as members of parliament will do what they believe to be in the national interest not just in the party interest. But the Prime Minister would say in response that that's exactly what he is trying to do. He is trying to fulfil the wishes of the people. Well, yes, you, you'll remember very clearly that at the time of the referendum, when we expressed the wishes of the people, we were told that there was no conceivable way we would have no deal. Indeed, Michael Gove, who is now a prominent member of the Cabinet, was saying exactly the same in March of this year. There was no deal off the table, was what they were saying. So if that was what they were saying then, and that was their interpretation of the referendum, how can they conceivably argue that today they're fulfilling the referendum by going for no deal? Lord Heseltine, I would love to speak more, but sadly we are out of time.